I just have a few things. Uh, just give us new stuff, please. Uh, okay. I, I just tell you some of my experience. I um, and as you can imagine, I'm not happy with it. <laughs> and I want to thank you for your writing the letter. I really, uh, I was astounded when you just said that, and I, I thank you very much. I went to, to um, a couple of months ago. I I went with you know, people here on. Um, uh, we walked on Swanee uh, River State Park and we went to some of the Cathedral. And I had never been to any of those places. Salmon is absolutely astoundingly beautiful. And by the way, on this little um, kiosk, it shows how much water they've lost over the years, which is astounding amount. So when we walked um, the, the Swanee River State Park area, and we walked where the pipeline would go, because they already had it marked with some flags. And we walked, by the way, with um, Ted uh, Congressman Yoko's assistant. And she was very knowledgeable about boring and how you can't change the, the direction of a bore. And um, it looks like a moonscape. There's so many little sinkholes here and there. It's, it's just a place like I've never seen before. It's not a place we should be um, going into. Um, so that's um, that's kind of all I'm going to say about that. Um, I don't want it. I think it's like, like Karen Guerin said. It should. If you have to have it at all, it should be where your infrastructure is, where you can monitor it, and above. And over 90% is going to be exported. It's not going to help our country. And if it drives the price of gas up, it's not going to help the agriculture industry get a purpose. So I just want to say one thing, and I'll try, I'll try to be as brief as I can. What we don't realize is, you know, you've heard what's upstream goes downstream. Well, in these areas where the, um, where the natural gas refineries are, if, if they blow up, like for instance, just want to give you an example. They're fighting it in Maryland, and it's called the Dominion Cove Point LNG. Let me tell you what these people are fighting. It's so bad, the pressure and the BTUs are so incredibly huge that if it blows up, there is a 2.2 mile um, radius evacuation zones. But yet they're putting it right next to a residential unit where there's daycare centers and churches and shopping centers and 2,000 homes. So think about Hialeah. Last time I was down there, it seemed pretty populous, right? I mean, it's been a while since I've been down there. So what we do up here is going to affect people all over Florida. And poor people especially. So think about those people. Think about in the compressor stations. I just want to tell you this. When I was uh, went to a FERC um, meeting in Bell, uh, several people who live in Gilchrist County talked about the compressor stations that they want to put near their houses. If a compressor station blows up and incinerates everything within a quarter mile, everything, that is like a bomb. And I think this is just, we can't allow this. It's not, it's not fair. Um, it kills people. Um, so one thing I want to tell you is because this relates to fracking, um, Gail had this copy that we saw the other day in um, of 40 counties that are, have, um, you know, we do, don't want fracking. And it's 75% of Florida's population that doesn't want it. So I'm going to give you a copy, Mr. Quincy, and if you could make a copy for the rest of the people, that would be really great. Um, and let's see. And you've heard of Cancer Alley on the Gulf Coast because of all the oil and gas. If you look at a map of all the pipelines in the United States, the concentration of pipelines in Texas, Louisiana, I think in Mississippi, all along the Gulf Coast is absolutely astounding. And we're getting, um, and there's leakages all over the place, all over the United States. They did a study in Washington, D.C., where they found huge amounts of methane leaks in the pipelines there. So, if you want to talk about jobs, 
having detecting methane leak detection, you know, I mean, leaks in our nation's pipelines would be a great uh, job uh, generator. Um, so let me just see if I can wrap. Okay, here too about the flows that have been decreasing in the Santa Fe River, Carrie Thielen wearing the blue Santa, our Santa Fe. Uh, she took a four-day course at Florida Springs Institute. And when I saw this, it shows that since the 1970s, the Santa Fe River flows are declining precipitously, even though the <coughs> rainfall has been constant. So I'm going to give you this. Um, I didn't make enough, I didn't have to make enough copies, but the OMESS, I don't know if that's a, um, someone, I don't know, did a misspelling or not, but it's clearly <coughs> not, so that's for you guys. And um, I'll, I'll just wrap it up. I uh, really don't think you should issue a, um, uh, any permit for this, actually, at all. It should not, uh, the Sable Trail Pipeline would be like a complete disaster for the state of Florida. We're already having so much stuff going on. Our springs are dying, as you know. And in this area of Florida, I think it's like the spring central. And our tourism is important. Our tourism is what makes Florida special. Our springs are what makes Florida special. and like no other place on earth, and, and everything that you can do to protect this incredible gem would be appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you. Girlie Howe.